He's a bit of each himself. Your host, your hero, my uncle, Red Green. Here is Harold, my producer and director and nephew. Oh boy. Oh boy. I like to cut, wipe, dolly, and zoom squeeze frame. Let's hope he's talking about television terms there. <laughs> kind of a quiet week up at the lodge this week. No, no way it wasn't. There's lots to talk about, like crime. And plenty of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> we got thieves among us, Uncle Red. And, and, and bullies. Oh, Harold. Somebody steal your lunch again? Yes. <laughs> and I know who it was, too. Oh, I do, I do. It was Buster Hatfield's kid. What a punk. Buster Hatfield's kid? You mean Susie? Yeah, her. She's a punk. <laughs> Not fair at all. Harold, you don't even know if it was her. Just because your lunch is missing out of your locker doesn't mean Susie took it. Well, I know it's her. I'm walking through the cafeteria, right? Just walking along, and I'm looking for, you know, someone to let me sit with them. And all of a sudden, I got my lunch hanging in my hand. She walks right up and grabs it and keeps on walking. <laughs> What could I could do? I couldn't, you know, you can't hit her. No, 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 Harold, no. You don't ever hit anyone. Because they could hit you back and you'd fold up like a deck chair. <laughs> you know that. Person's got to do something, though. Well, you know, it's each individual's responsibility to stop crime. Yeah. That's why I'm going to tell the principal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Get an all points boating going there. <laughs> what was in the lunch, anyway? Three sardine sandwiches and a pomegranate. Well, you better tell the cops to treat her as armed and dangerous. <laughs> got kind of an apocalyptic show for you this week. Uh, got a little bit of fire there, and that would be pestilence, I would think, in a big way. And we have uh, assault with a friendly weapon, so stay tuned. Now, you know, there's a lot of good things about living in an area like Possum Lake where everybody knows everybody. You don't get a lot of adultery when everybody's your cousin. <laughs> there's no justice. What? No justice. The system's completely breaking down. Oh. There's no protection of individual rights. Oh, no! <laughs> Crime is running rampant. Oh. Okay, you know what happens? I go right into the principal's office, right, to report my, my uh, lunch theft. Oh, yeah. While I'm in there, someone steals my running shoes. It's probably Susie. You need running shoes when the sardines kick in. Uncle Red, you mock this, but this is just the tip of the iceberg, I'm telling you. You know what? In the big cities, right? In the big cities, right? In the big cities, right? They got, like, murders every time, and then there's, like, fires and arson and, and gang wars going on all over the place. Just a matter of time before it's here in Possum Lake. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a pressure cooker out there, I'm telling you. And when it blows, boom! Beans everywhere. Oh, yeah. I will not stand for it, Uncle Red. I will not. You know, Harold, you should just kind of relax a little bit, you know? This this might just be kind of a hormone buildup that teenagers get when they don't date. Yeah? Yeah. Boy, you got a good memory. <laughs> You know, the sad thing is your generation doesn't have a war where they can go off to a foreign country and blow off some steam. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it starts with stealing lunches and stealing shoes, and then there's car stealing, and they're running numbers. Well, we're not gonna take it anymore. We're starting a neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we're setting up a snitch line so you can phone in and you can snitch on people. Yeah, we're gonna march up and down the streets making sure that law and order is preserved in our community. Who's this we, the we, who's we? Me and Tommy Dougal. Yeah. yeah, you know Tommy. He's got the bad skin and the motor scooter. Tommy? Yeah. And Chubby Dixon, him too. Yeah. The three of us. Yeah. We're safety in numbers. Yeah. Well, those are pretty odd numbers. <laughs> Welcome to Possum Lodge Word Game. <laughs> and what's this week's grand prize? Well, if you've ever thought of owning your very own Ford convertible Mustang, well, then you probably have a lot of sales brochures, and now you can keep those sales brochures organized in these five free file folders! <laughs> file folders made available by the Home Despot, your home and office supplier, Uncle Red.
You have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dalton Humphrey to say this word. Hand. Hand. Go! All right, uh, Dalton, this is something you have two of. No, no, okay, okay, no, no, all right. Um, okay, okay, you go out for a walk with your wife and you hold... My temper. Okay, okay, your wife's feeling affectionate. She reaches over and takes your... Wallet. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's say your, your wife is planning a fancy dinner. KFC! All right, that's, good. that's good. I'll go another way. Okay, when somebody gets angry at somebody, they will hit him with a firm... Paternity suit. <laughs> You're running out of time, Uncle Red. Five fingers. Five angry drivers. <laughs> all right, all right. Dalton, what's this? Liver spots. Come on. <laughs> Injury. Right. And why do I have a hammer injury? One hand doesn't know what the other one's doing. Oh, hand, hand. Oh, right. This week on Handyman Corner, I thought I'd show you how your kitchen can be almost as much fun as your workshop. You know, a lot of the famous chefs are men. You know, you see them on TV. You know, that guy, uh, well, the fat guy. And that other, the loud one, the loud guy, and then there's that, there's that drunk guy. Now think of all the fat, loud, drunk guys you know. Huh? They could be chefs. And if you like your tools, well, they could double as kitchen utensils. Spatula? Garlic press? Electric food slicer? Walnut crusher? Bottle opener? Stubborn bottle opener? Meat skewers? Meat tenderizer, and so on. You know, but if you're going to use the same tools in the kitchen that you do in the garage, you might want to clean them off first. You don't want food on your car. <laughs> and if you like power tools, why not have power kitchen appliances, eh? Look what I've done here. See what this is? This is my old Betamax. Now, I didn't just throw it in the garbage or give it to my grandma like most of you did. No, no. I hooked her up to the microwave. Why? Well, I'll show you. When I want to heat up, say, a bowl of my soup here, I just put her into the microwave, close her up, and I just press play for a few seconds. Now I should get her. That new kind of TV dinner I got going here. <laughs> that looks good, doesn't it? But maybe some of you like to have your soup even hotter than that. Well, put her back in, close her up, hit the fast forward on that. You know, if you have food allergies, you might just run a head cleaner tape in there. And that should get her. All right. Ooh. Boy, that's, that's hot. Oh. No problem, we'll just leave it in there and just hit rewind, cool it down a little bit. That should do it. Oh. All right, I I'm, I'm ain't cooling down a little too much, but you get the general idea. I'll tell you another beauty of this unit here. When you want to get the stuff out of the oven, you just hit the eject button. <laughs> soup's on, Harold. Actually, soup's on, Harold. <laughs> okay, this brings me to my next thing for the handyman's kitchen. Your oven cleaner slash freezer defroster. Now, what you need for that is a can of oven cleaner, roll of duct tape, dirty oven, and a frosty freezer. Okay, first thing, make sure they're all facing up. Okay, now what you want to do is put your oven cleaner into the freezer. That's right, into the freezer. That's what I said. You heard me right. Soak her in there real good. Now, what you want to do is to get your freezer up on top of your dirty oven. Who makes these things so darn heavy? Hey, this is a very important point. Make sure that the door's open on the freezer and on the oven. Man. There we go. Kind of looks like they're mating, doesn't it? Maybe that's where microwave ovens come from. All right, now this is where the duct tape comes in. You ever seen duct tape this size? That's the relaxed fit. Okay, what you want to do is to make this completely airtight here. You want to have a perfect seal. That's why I put the oven cleaner inside the freezer. Didn't want to hurt the seal. <laughs> I have the Greenpeace people after me. <laughs> seal, Greenpeace. <laughs> Who needs writers? <laughs> All right, the cautious handyman always uses 10 times as much tape as he thinks is necessary. That's funny, eh? Sometimes you look at something and you think, you can't believe you built that with your own hands. Your parents will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, now all you have to do is uh, turn the oven on high. 
and uh, that's all there is to it really. Now the way the rig works is the uh, heat of the oven goes up and melts the ice in the freezer and then the melted ice or water as I like to call it that mixes with the oven cleaner and just flows right down into the oven. Isn't that a... Oh, I got this. Okay, on the duct, on the duct, duct tape. Okay, don't panic. Stay calm there and just get the duct tape on. All right, so now usually I would say women don't find hands, but they just find handy. But I'm thinking this week I'm going to say, if you can't stand the kitchen, get out of the heat. talk to you older types about modern art. Now, I know the artist is supposed to suffer for his art, but there's got to be a limit here. <laughs> I got dragged out to one of them modern art museums. I hung up my coat. Turns out the coat rack was actually a piece of art symbolizing man's dynamic symmetry. <laughs> now, I don't know how man's dynamic symmetry can be symbolized by a nail in a wall, <laughs> but that apparently means I'm insensitive. <laughs> They had this other thing, just blotches of paint on canvas. That was supposed to be art, too. They had a big statue made out of bird droppings. <laughs> they had a picture of a can of soup. Like, how are we supposed to know if it's good art if we don't even know if it's art? <laughs> now, here's a simple rule I use. If I can do it, it's not art. <laughs> I can finger paint, so that's not art. I can chant, I can stand still, I can sneeze into a piece of paper. None of that stuff is art. So I'm warning you modern artists out there. Either you stop doing stuff I can do, or I'll start doing stuff you can do. And then believe me, everybody's gonna suffer from my art. Remember, I'm going for you. We're all in this together. Some snitch line. You want to snitch on someone? Ha! Huh, excellent, excellent. Okay. All right. Who? Who? I do not. No, I do not. No, no, no. My mom says I haven't done that since I was nine years old. <laughs> well, she would know she does the laundry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and by the way, it's not a crime. It's a condition. Well, Harold, I see your snitch line is bringing out the best in people. We got some calls. Yeah. We got some calls. Yeah, we got one from uh, old lady Bankman. Her cat has been missing since 1983. <laughs> Moose Thompson calls. Someone stole his gremlin. Uh -huh. Yeah, he says if anyone returns it, he'll have them arrested. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting one. Plenty McClintic called. Yeah. Someone stole his toolbox. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you know, Harold, I thought that you were going to be out walking the streets with this, not by the phone here, like JoJo's Sidekick Alliance or something, right? Oh, yeah, we are, we are, we are. It's just that Chubby's mom's still working on our, uh, our crime-fighting outfits, you know? Oh, I'm boy. hoping they're gonna use those big drapes in their front window. They're so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She uses the drapes, then I can walk up and use our slogan and say, it's curtains for criminals! Oh, man, yeah. well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Don't say it out loud unless you're tired of those teeth. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over there now for a fitting, you know? Well, whilst I'm on my way over, yeah. maybe I maybe I could return that toolbox to Flinty for you. Oh, this? Oh. Was oh, this Flinty? Well, you know, I think. You know, I got. Oh! <laughs> yeah. You know, you're Thank you, Harold. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, I used to be, but since I had you as a nephew, nothing bothers me. <laughs> Hello, Flinty? Yeah, I think Harold's got your toolbox. Oh, I heard that! Fine, Flint. Now, this is something that you can do on a Saturday. I don't mean run over a guy, you know. I mean, it's a little something you can do when you got a vehicle, and this is something no one ever does anymore. It's uh, rotating the tires and, uh, you know, switching one for the other and so on. The bill had a plan here. He's going to number all the tires, and, yeah, I think we, you know, okay, I think we understand that. It's not that, it's not that. It ruins it, you know, when someone over, over. Anyway, um, okay, let's just get going. That's it. Yeah, that's right. First thing you want to do is to jack up, uh, jack up the one wheel. Now, which wheel will this be? This will be number. Yeah, don't, don't explain. Bill, Bill, Bill. Yes, thank you. Let's, let's, uh, let's move on. All right. What you want to do is you want to number your tires so that you don't confuse. Don't want to take. All right, chalks. Bill, chalk is not going to work. 
on a tire. All right, let's get another idea. What's he got there? What's that uh, silly? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that I see it. Oh, no, it's not. No, you see? Okay, no, you know what? That's not funny. I was wrong. I was wrong about that. It's not... Okay, get away from me. All right. Uh, let's get rotating. Okay, put the number. Just get a number somehow. Mark that tire any way you can. Just any number you want. Wow. Oh, he's pretty good with that thing. All right, now you know what you're looking for is... Uh... Oh, boy. Oh, this one. Well, he must have incredible medical conditions. No, what? Oh! Well, he's got another one now. All right, so he's got all the nuts off there. Watch your foot. All right, uh, Bill, Bill, be careful. Be careful. Oh. oh! this is a... Okay, okay, this is a, what we call a time filler. we got to get all these. They're all over the place now. Who's going to find those? Why did I ask? All right, so... Uh, actually, it's, I don't mind it. Keeps me farther away from Bill and less chance of being injured. Wish I could say the same for the van. But uh, I try not to get revenge right away. Oh. I wait a minute. No idea. No idea. No, no, I, no, I, I know. All right, so he's getting up. This is number tire number three now. And I'll just pull that right off. The, the rim is kind of open. Pulled it right off. Pulled it right off the rim there. Bill, you're doing a well. You're doing a good job. Yeah, you kind of three. Oh, got one. Oh, I was gonna say we got one more to go, and looks like we got it. I'm not having the best time ever, uh, and I'm thinking I really don't want to spend the rest of the day here. I, I think I'll head off to the railroad tracks. Tommy and Chubby are out there roaming the streets, amateurs and immatures. <laughs> I call them the three dorketeers. <laughs> they got the uniforms and everything. It's pretty sad, I gotta tell you. You gotta see. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's quite a look, Harold. The, uh... The bird head is a nice touch. I'm guessing yeah. that's the only chick you'll get close to. It's not just any bird either. That's yeah. a pigeon. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We call our, our crime-fighting squadron the stool pigeon. Oh. <laughs> stool pigeon. That's a medical term, isn't it, Harold? <laughs> no, it reminds people, you know, to phone the authorities in the event of a criminal act. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah, we're really reducing crime. <laughs> I don't know, Harold. I look at you, I want to commit one. <laughs> You know why? You know why? You know why? Because you were brought up in a violent society. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna have to learn to fight that. And that's what we do. We stool pigeons. We offer people a remedy for, you know, for changing things and getting out there and, and having a non-violent way of remedying and keeping peace in the society. Wow. Harold, do you, do you mind a little advice? Not at all. Unlike yourself, I embrace change. Good. Go change. <laughs> No, I can't, because me and those stool pigeons got to patrol the streets. Yeah, we're going to swoop down from the skies and get a drop on crime. Well, don't get any droppings on your shoes. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. That part of the show, we examine those three little words that men find so hard to say. I don't know. <laughs> Way excellent. OK. All right. Joining me on the expert portion of the show this week is Mr. Winston Rothschild of the Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Where our motto is, if your cup overflows, I'll be there with my hose. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right, uh, this is our first letter, and it's from Edna K. And it goes as follows. Dear experts, I want to go on a grand vacation. Should I travel across the sea or somewhere in North America? All right, Edna, I'd say stay with North America, because you want to be able to drive home. I tell you, you get into your third week of Czechoslovakian cheeseburgers. <laughs> You're gonna want to slide into the van and head west, believe me. Oh, no, I gotta beg to differentiate with you there, Red. Europe's where you want to go. That's where all the history is. It's where, where she all began. Where what all began? Western civilization. That's right, yeah. Or, more specifically, sewage systems. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you can still go see and visit the, 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 the ancient Roman sewage system, the famous Cloaca Maxima. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll tell you, when you're looking down a toilet drain that was built in 580 B.C., it's almost like you're looking up the back end of your family tree. Uh, 
you know, maybe our, our viewer would like to go to Europe, you know, to, to visit museums and castles and see the sites where, you know, the turning points of history actually occurred. Well, whatever, if that's your thing, you know. <laughs> but I mean, how does that compare with seeing the home of, of, of Englishman Sir John Harrington, who in 1596 had the only water closet in the entire British Empire? Well, I bet he had a lineup. <laughs> no, well, I, and I advise that you go to Europe, you know, and, get, and go out and see things that aren't around here. Oh, for sure. Oh, France, you gotta go to France. Oh, yeah, you gotta see the, you gotta see the bathroom graffiti in Versailles. Oh, yeah, that's where, uh, in Marie Antoinette's own handwriting, it says, let them eat cake, but go easy on the bran muffins. <laughs> Sometimes your, your ideas border on a death wish, you know what I mean? No, no, those kids didn't mean any harm. They were, they were just having fun, huh? What were you stool pigeons doing up by the main highway, anyhow? Well, we got this phone call that old man Cedric was up there kicking stones at passing cars, so we went to check it out. What was that about? Old man Cedric was up there kicking stones at passing cars. <laughs> but then these tough guys came along and said they were going to beat us up. And Chubby speaks right up and he says, Oh, yeah, well, you guys are just all talk, which we now know was a mistake to say. <laughs> But then, you know what happened then? When Susie came by and she says, hey, you tops, don't be hitting Harold as hard as the others. <laughs> I think she loves me. Love hurts, doesn't it, Harold? Today, yes. Yeah. 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 But you know what's great? You know, I think she just took my lunch to get my attention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she just stole it to take my attention. Yeah. And she stole my heart. Oh, boy. Well, if you like sardines, you may have a chance. <laughs> It's meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down in a minute, all right? Where you go, in. Ah! Take it easy now. <laughs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Uh, looks like Harold may have found a little bit of puppy love, and if it goes any further than that, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't want any of the pups. <laughs> uh, the rest of you, thanks for watching. We have myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the lodge. If you could stick on here. I want an announcement tonight. It actually, it's a warning, and it's for all of us. If you're boating at night, watch out for the water ski jump, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, because Sticky Peterson, he's going to be okay, but he's going to need help getting his boat off the church steeple. <laughs> so, any volunteers? <laughs> you got to go really fast. 